There's a couple common problems to e-bikes and bike racks that you see all over the internet. One is, how do you get the bike up on the rack itself? And two, the bikes are so bulky that they end up covering up all the taillights and the lighting on the vehicle itself, so the rack itself needs to have some type of lights on it. I'm gonna show you a bike rack from a company called Cirrus, and this is the Door County model that addresses those issues and a couple of others. Let's get to it. The rack itself is very compact. It rolls on four wheels, which makes it mobile. It's got two handles here that actually fold down, you, but you can use these handles when you lift the rack up to insert it into the receiver for the hitch. Now this piece here, I've got the pin in here, but this will actually fold up and it makes a pretty compact unit itself. This piece will be important in a moment, but what this does is when you put the pin in there to secure it to the receiver, it actually screws in and that expands in order to expand it within the receiver and therefore keep it from swaying too much. So I'll just lift this up. Now, this is a 60 pound unit all by itself and you do need to raise it about 12 inches. So I pick it up, put it in the receiver and I'll show you what I did. Just so I don't have to maneuver it all around myself once it's in there, I scored the paint here and I'll put this line right up against the edge of the receiver and then I know the hitch pin will go in just fine. You can see I've got it lined up here, my little teeter line. And then the pin goes in. And then you're gonna screw that in until it stops and then we'll snug it up. And then on the other side of the pin, just put this lock on and that secures the hitch pin in. Now the lights here fold for storage, but they're actually on a swivel. And you can move them all the way down here, fold them in like that. But when you wanna use the rack, you pull them out and then they snap into this rubber piece right here with this bar. That holds them in place. Unfold the ramp, we're almost ready to go. Now this does take a seven pin connection because it needs to power the rack. And this is the control. I'll put the key in, turn it on. And then I'm gonna push the down button. And now the rack will lower itself just about to the ground. As you can see, I'm driving a SUV, depending on the height of your hitch, will depend on how close it gets to the ground, but this is about five to six inches off the ground for me. Now I'm gonna bring the bike up. Now for me, I'm gonna have to lift this about six inches off the ground, but the rest of it, I can just wheel it up here, just like this. And the first thing I'll do, since I'm loading this by myself, is I've already got this center mount uh, set so that I know exactly where it's at. I'll insert the strap and I'll use this to lock it down. You can also secure the strap with the key lock so it can't be undone. And now the bike won't move for loading. So now I feed the strap through, put it in the buckle and at least make it latch one time right there. The same goes for the front buckle. Just make sure your tire is inside the wheel well. Put it through just like this. And make sure that at least one is tied, just like that. Bring the front strap through, put it in the buckle, and make sure you hear at least one or two clicks. Now, you can use the buckle as a strap, a ratchet strap. 
and tighten that down. Uh, I can tell you it's so hot down here in southern Florida on the edge of the Everglades that my GoPro automatically shut down because it told me it was too hot outside. But uh, tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and load up two bikes and we're going to go for a ride and see how much this weighs, if at all. So far I've been very pleased with it. It loads fairly easy. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you and tell you that uh, you have to do a couple dry runs you know, at home when you're loading this because you want to know where to set your mounting brackets on here. You want to know how to, uh, which spokes to get your, your locking straps through down there. You want to make sure with the wheelbase of your bike that it fits the rack. You also want to make sure that you have good practice getting some of your accessories off here. So we're going to take a break for this evening and tomorrow we're going to get back at it. I loaded the other bike up and as you can see, you just point it in the other direction. Loads exactly the same way and I'm going to speed this up a little bit for you to show you how far the rack actually raises up. My SUV actually has a high hitch on it, so yours may go all the way down to the ground. Again, it depends. You can see the lights on it, which is one of the big issues with e-bike racks. They've solved it. These are fantastic lights. You'll see this later in the uh, test drive. And this is how the bikes look on the rack. The standoff from the car is really nice going to the rack. Let's go for a ride. Now in Florida, we don't have a lot of potholes, but we do have these heaving marks where the asphalt kind of gets soft and areas of it have sort of lifted up. And I try to drive over as many of these with my cameraman behind me. That's my good friend, Neil. And there's just enough sway in this rack to relieve the pressure. You wouldn't want it completely solid because then the rack would have to absorb any shock uh, when you go over bumps and whatnot. So you can see it's very stable. Um, I felt really secure driving with the, the racks like this. Try to get the speed going up and try to make as many turns and hit as many of these little bumps as possible. I didn't have any issues. Uh, at first, when you put your e-bikes on the back of a rack like that, you probably do some white knuckle driving, but uh, I used to do this with a motorcycle on a 350 pound bike on the back of one of these hitch carriers and you know after a half dozen times once you realize that it's engineered for this it's uh it's not a problem i really hope you notice how the lights work you can see on the back of the vehicle with those two e-bikes you cannot see any of my stock vehicle lights you can't see the license plate that could be a no whole nother issue but i'd rather get stopped by a police officer for not being able to see my license instead of uh actually having a police officer there because somebody rammed into the back of my vehicle. But the big issue is the lights are genius on this rack. And uh, for older people who ride e-bikes, trying to get the bikes actually up in the rack is prohibitive. So this thing solves that problem very well. Now next I'm going to show you the straps. And that is, the, Saris has these straps and they say put these on the front tires. This is in addition to the ratchet strap. And this is so the tire doesn't turn. Now my four inch tire here, the strap was a little small, so I made my own and put it on there. And then you wanna make sure that your tires actually fit in the channel, and mine do, both the three inch tire and the four inch tire. Now you see how this locking cam here locks onto that bolt, that helps prevent the swing. And then this tilt function, which is perfect for me because I keep all the accessories for the bike in the back of my vehicle, so I wanna be able to get those out and this does that. So it takes a little bit of an effort to push these bikes up because my bike is a beast and uh, they're both heavy. To unload the bikes, obviously just uh, reverse everything, and it's pretty easy just to roll them off. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up so you don't have to watch the entire process, but I get them off fairly easy. The nice thing about being so low to the ground is my other rack, really I, I kind of need two people. It's got a ramp on it. I can, I can get it done, but being close to the ground makes this a lot easier to do this by yourself. The bike offloads and stores easily. 
It's built like a tank, it's high quality, and it solves a lot of problems for e-bikers, especially how to get out and about and go elsewhere with your heavy e-bikes.